Hey, I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe, please hit like, and please share. So today I'm going to do a quick video on what is my channel and other things. So my YouTube channel is a watch repair and servicing channel primarily, although you do see me put videos on my flight simulation, which I've been doing since the late 80s with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, and also I do uh, some music videos where I play guitar. I've been playing guitar since I'd say the early 70s. Uh, and I love rock and roll. I love uh, blues. I love jazz. I love all kinds of music. So I'm a musician, hobbyist, um, but this channel is specifically for watch repair and servicing. I also have a crazy sense of humor and I put videos on that sometimes have very funny stuff that I want to share and I just, maybe I think it's funny and others don't, but I think it's pretty funny so I share it anyway. So it's watch repair and servicing. So I focus on mainly on pocket watches, which are vintage from, uh, I'd say from 1860 to let's say 1940 is the uh, generally what we're looking at from a pocket watch perspective. Um, and so I'll be completely servicing a pocket watch. And in this case, I am able to make some parts. Um, I do balance staffs. Uh, I can repivot a balance, which I put in my most recent video on repivoting a balance. I have a previous video on how to repivot on a lathe. I have some very nice watchmakers lathe and I've shown some technique on how to use them. I also have videos on uh, on tools. Um, I've shown the uh, J-Cot tool or the jacket tool used for uh, working on balance pivots and watch uh, gear pivots. Um, and I've also shown other tools like my staking sets and other very unique tools that are used for for uh, working on and, and that's all folks. Forgot what to say. So I also show other vintage tools that are used for uh, servicing uh, vintage watches. Um, I do have some videos on watch repair and servicing books and what books you should have. And I do have a, vi a complete video on tools that are needed to get into the watch repair uh, trade or to have watch repair as a hobby. I know a lot of people that are maybe older and retiring want to have a hobby. Well, get into it before you retire like I did. And that way when you retire, you're well equipped to actually repair watches and you can have some fun doing it and not be uh, pressured by having to go to work the next day and you can complete your job. So I do all kinds of watches as you've seen. Um, what you're looking at in this video here is actually a platform balance from a Mappen and Webb uh, carriage clock. And the carriage clocks are very old. This one is probably from the mid 1800s, uh, very beautiful carriage uh, clock and I sometimes am a victim of people wanting me to re-pivot um, the uh, wheel or something on a carriage clock um, and usually you see the escapement wheel on the left hand side that little bugger sometimes the pivots break on that and I've got people in my area come to my door with uh, watch to, or the uh, pivot on the staff to uh, to re-pivot so, so I've done that and, and uh, don't necessarily like doing that, but, but I do do it because I can uh, get it down to 0.3 millimeter of a, of a hole. So that's, I think, the limit that I can drill down to. And, and so I do that on my channel. Um, I just completed, so what's on the bench right now, I just completed the Oyster, the Tudor Oyster Princess watch, very small ladies watch. It had a hairspring issue. It's working very well and it's delivered. I made a video on that. Um, I just, uh, I'm completing the 1950s Zenith uh, watch, wristwatch, and it's got a 13.133.8 bumper movement. Um, and this is a very unique movement. It allows for the, uh, for the watch to be, to be much thinner because the bumper and the rotor is only around a, I'll say a two thirds of a rotor. Um, so one third is not rotor, it's movement. Um, <clears throat> I could actually do the math on it correctly for you, but anyway, that allows the rotor to be kind of embedded into the movement as opposed to sitting on the top of the movement like a normal automatic watch would. And it just kind of bumps back and forth. And there's a, a video that I put out uh, ye yesterday, I believe, on this particular bumper movement and my assembly of this bumper movement. Very difficult. 
And what I did to, to do this job is I took photographs of my disassembly of the bumper movement so I'd know how to put it back. And I also used my video and I went in my video editor and I reversed the video so I could actually see the removal. And when I reversed it, you can basically see the assembly. So I followed the assembly by reversing the video. That's a good tip for you out there if you're able to just videotape your repair. Um, no audio or anything, just videotape it and then reverse the video and then follow the, the steps backwards. Of course, you need to, to do all the appropriate oiling of the watches as you go forward. So that's that's something too. Um, and I'm just completing my friend's uh, Seiko, my friend Jim's Seiko watch. So it has a 7S36 movement in it. I was repairing this movement um, and I believe it requires uh, a part that's going to cost a bit of money. So I thought, well, I think I'll just buy another 7S36 movement. So I've got one coming in the mail. Um, and I'm just going to be installing the 7S36 movement into his dive watch as opposed to trying to buy a part for almost the same cost as a full movement. Um, so you got to make those kind of decisions when you're doing watch repair. Do I repair this thing or do I get a brand new one? So when I did the Oyster Princess watch, it had a hairspring issue. I did show the technique for straightening out a hairspring. I was able to straighten out the hairspring and get the curve proper. Um, I did a lot of work on the regulating pins and the angles of the, regulator, the regulating pins. Um, I'd like to thank Alex out there who's got his washer uh, tutorial channel for showing some of the details on how to how to actually work on those regulating pins. And he also has a, a video on, on the tool needed to actually separate those pins because they need to be as close uh, together as possible without actually squishing, there's a technical term for you, but actually squishing the hairspring. So I did a lot of work on that. I got it going, but it just didn't have the amplitude that I wanted from it. So so I went online and I found a, uh, a Tudor Oyster Princess uh, uh, for that particular movement, the proper um, hairspring and balance. And I replaced the hairspring and balance. Funny thing is um, when you install the hairspring, it was coned downward from where the where the actual hairspring is uh, attached to the balance cock, and I had to use my tweezers to 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 adjust the coning so that it would sit flat within the watch. So this is a brand new hairspring, um, and it needed work, so it needed adjustment. So adjusting hairsprings, you can't do this unless you have a a the proper microscope, a stereo microscope, to do that. Um, doing it with just an eyepiece is uh, probably a disaster waiting to happen. So I did that and got that running. So this is the kind of very advanced technique I, I show. Um, and now that watch has been delivered, um, it's running exceptionally well. Uh, it had an amplitude like you wouldn't believe and I got the bead error down to almost zero. So so, <clears throat> so that's very good. So that's, uh, so Jim's watches, that, the uh, 7S36 movement I'm waiting for in the mail. Um, but I was able to tune his quartz watch. I made a video on that and it had a screw on it and that screw You adjust it left or right to actually speed the watch up or slow it down. It doesn't actually say uh, On the movement which direction so you're assuming counterclockwise will slow it down Clockwise will speed it up. I made that assumption um, Correctly and it did work and I had to adjust it a number of times so I'd adjust it let it work for a day come back and to measure the actual seconds time with uh, the, the web program time is t-i-m-e-i-s so time is dot com and it gives you the exact time so I use that time is and looked at the watch and saw how whether it was running fast or slow and then adjusted that screw again so that was kind of an odd job but Jim loved that watch and it just was never keeping time so I said I'll have a look at it so so next on the bench is uh, is a Hamilton 21 Jewel Railroad grade watch. Love working on those watches. It's got a crazy high bead error of plus five, which is not good. You want the bead error to be inside one. If you can get the bead error as close to zero as possible, then you're able to have a watch that you can regulate in all positions, right? So and there's re typically you're regulating it in five positions. If you're going to regulate it in three positions. Um, it's going to be dial up, uh, dial down, and crown up, or crown left, depending on 
what which way you're wearing the watch so those are the three positions um, anyway that's that's that so um, I've got some other things in my in the back burner that I've got to work on that some of my watches that I've had for a lot of years that I haven't had a chance to get get at I'm working on watches for other people right now um, and from you my audience what I'd like to know is what other videos uh, would you like me to to uh, to produce um, I've done a lot of videos on various tools, some advanced videos, like I said, on the how to use a JCOT tool, um, and advanced jeweling videos. Um, I haven't had the jewel watch in a, a little while, but but I've done some work on actually using the seats jeweling tool and how to do jeweling on watch watches, and a lot of things you can do with a staking set. If you're going to be a watch repair person, then you need to have a staking set. You need to watch videos and read books. On, on how to use a staking set property for all kinds of things, including making a whole diameter smaller and then making it bigger by reaming out the hole to the right size um, or, or actually burnishing the hole and smoothening it. Um, I've made videos on, on oiling, oiling watches and how to do it, which oils to use, how to get a small drop of oil on your oiler versus a very large drop of oil, all kinds of technique plus uh, videos on the use of uh, tweezers um, and what type of tweezers I use. I use brass tweezers um, and I just find them very good for, for uh, moving screws and doing things. I have another set of very small uh, tweezers that, are, that, are, uh, that I've shown that are from Italy um, and I bought a bunch of them. Um, go to Cordon, C-O-R-D-O-N Tools. Um, it's in Canada and they have a website and they have an amazing set of all kinds of tools for all kinds of machine projects and wood projects and everything. So go see them. Uh, a shout out to Sonny, who's a friend here on on YouTube. Um, and he's uh, he's provided lots of um, advice over the last couple of years. Um, so really, really good guy. And Chris as well, who's got his own uh, watch repair channel, who does exceptional quality videos. I kind of tend to ramble on and some people actually like that because I just a stream of consciousness they call it um, and I talk while I'm doing the repair so you get more or less a live repair where I show any problems I might have I don't bl had I don't blank those out I just keep going with my pro with the problems and how to resolve the problems and really in watchmaking it's the mindset of how do I how do I diagnose this problem how do I think about repairing this problem I remember I'm doing squirrel moments right now in case you're curious, but I remember having a fourth wheel pivot broken, and this is the pivot that's used to support the seconds hand on a pocket watch. And I wasn't sure how the heck to to fix that problem because I didn't want to have to source a new fourth wheel for this watch. So I ended up putting a hat on the shaft, and the hat became the pivot. I put a video on that online, and it's a very complex job to do, but it worked exceptionally well, and I was able to. Um, snap the pivot off to the right size and put the seconds hand on after I'd completed building this little tiny hat for the watch. So, so anyway, stuff like that. So if you enjoy my channel, please let me know. Please comment. Um, if you want me to do other work on on uh, my channel, then comment as well. If you want my channel to have more production quality, um, then let me know. It's going to take a lot more time for me to to produce a video and you'll get less content but you'll get maybe a better production where I do scene changes every three to five seconds. This tends to attract more viewers because they like to see the scene changes, but people that are real watchmaker hobbyists really want to see what's going on. So they're willing to watch it and watch every action that's, that's uh, taking place in the, uh, in the repair. So let me know whether you want that to happen or not. Um, I'll continue making the videos. Um, and, and I hope it's very interesting uh, to you. And please subscribe to my channel and please help me get more than 10,000 subscribers. I want to break that, that barrier and get my videos up now. I recently uh, retired from full-time work and maybe take on part-time in the future, but I'm retired from full-time work now. So I'm able to do more watchmaking and take on more work. If you want to get a hold of me, you can email, email me at uh, jdwatchservice at gmail.com jdwatchservice at gmail.com I include that in the front and back end of my videos 
And I think I'll stop putting that music introduction in my videos now, uh, although I really like the tune. So thank you very much, and thank you for watching my channel, and I'll catch you next time.